Welcome back, Confirmands, to our continuing look at the story of Scripture, all the way from Genesis to Revelation. As always, have your Bible and your catechism ready to look up any Bible passages or questions and answers that we'll look at together, and have a pen or a pencil and some paper nearby to write down any notes or questions for class on Sunday. So with that, let's begin as we always do by remembering that we are baptized and beloved children of God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In our previous video, we summarized the main events of what we now call Maundy Thursday and Good Friday, the last few days of Jesus' earthly life before he died and rose again. It started off joyously enough as Jesus brought his friends and disciples together one last time to celebrate the Passover. But things quickly went south as Jesus was betrayed by his friend Judas, denied by his friend Peter, and deserted by all of his other friends. Even on the cross, Jesus' own father turned his back on him and forsake him. And so what does this death mean for us now, 2,000 years later? Let's think about why Jesus had to die in the first place. As we talked about last week in our videos over Jesus' ministry while he was here on earth, one of the reasons why God became man in the first place, one of the reasons why God put on human flesh, was to identify with us, to know what we go through, and most importantly, to redeem all of our experiences that we have as humans. Because part of our human experience is death, because each and every one of us is going to die at some point, God redeemed death by dying. Remember what we read from Paul in his letter to the Romans, chapter 6. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. So through Jesus' death, our death has been redeemed as well. But why did Jesus have to die on a cross? Why couldn't he have died a natural death at the end of a long life, like hopefully most of us will? Well, there are a number of different reasons, and the first reason is crucifixion is probably the most agonizing and the most painful method of execution that could ever have been thought of and conceived of by human beings. We won't go into the details of what made crucifixion so painful and so uh, excruciating, so agonizing, but it does show us that Jesus took on our worst pain. He took on our worst punishment. There is no pain or no punishment that we can endure that he hasn't already endured, that he hasn't already felt. In fact, if you go to Isaiah chapter 53, there's a great section there that's called the suffering servant, and this foreshadows Jesus' death on a cross. If you look at verse 5, we read that Jesus would be pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, and with his wounds we are healed. Through Jesus' pain, our pain is healed as well. The next reason why Jesus was crucified is crucifixion was reserved for the worst of the worst criminals. Most often, this meth method of execution was used for violent men who committed violent acts, such as robbers or murderers. The Romans also used it to execute enemies of the state, as if to say, this is what is going to happen to you if you dare defy the Roman Empire. And so, as Jesus was crucified, he was crucified among the worst of the worst criminals of his time. In doing so, Jesus identified with the worst people and the worst sins that could be committed. If you look back at Isaiah chapter 53 again, if you look at verse 9, we see that Jesus made his grave with the wicked, even though he had done no violence. So, through Jesus' death on a cross, he identified with the worst people, and that includes us. There's a great hymn, Chief of Sinners. The first line is, Chief of Sinners, though I be, Jesus shed his blood for me. Another reason why Jesus was crucified was crucifixion was an incredibly shameful way to die as well. 
Often the victims of crucifixion were forced to carry their cross, forced to carry the instrument of their own execution through the streets of the city. And the bystanders and the citizens would stand along the street and jeer and mock them as the criminals walked past. And if you remember from the narratives of the Passion, that happened to Jesus too. Then, as the criminals were crucified, they were stripped of their clothes and left on the cross to hang for hours, if not days, with no clothes, naked, grasping, or gasping for air, and grasping for strength as they got weaker and weaker. That happened to Jesus. But if you look at uh, Colossians, if you look at Paul's letter to the Colossians, if you look at chapter 2, verse 15, why did Jesus endure the shame of the cross and this method of execution? Well, Jesus disarmed sin and death and put them to open shame through his shame on the cross. So through the shame on Jesus' cross, he has redeemed our shame and taken all of our shame on himself as well. And one last reason why Jesus was crucified goes back to an ancient law that God gave to his people, Israel, as they left Egypt. God said that if a man who had committed a crime were to be put to death on a tree, he would be under a curse from God. And so, Jesus, as Jesus was put to death on a cross made out of wood of a tree, he took on the entire curse of sin on our behalf. If you turn to Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, Paul says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. And also in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, Paul again says, For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So, while the death of Jesus is incredibly hard to talk about and to think about, we can do so with the assurance that he did all of this because he loves us, and as question 165 in our catechism says, he had compassion on us. We also have the knowledge that Jesus didn't stay dead either, but we will get to that next time. For now, let's close with our blessing. May the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Thank you. We will see you next time.